Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Watch You Want. Thanks for logging on. I'm here with the sea monster that scared Zenith fans out of the water during the mid 2000s, the Zenith DeFi Extreme, reference 96525 4000 caliber 4000. 46.5 millimeters, it's a combination of PVD titanium and Kevlar inserts, and this is, without a doubt, the most controversial watch of the 2000s. If you want an absolute lightning rod for love it or hate it opinion, this is it. The DeFi Extreme. The watch that turned Zenith into the watchmaking equivalent of Glitterati. The hottest brand on the market and the most controversial. This was so out of character with the history of the brand, which was something of the the watchmaker's version of the guy who eats Werther's original right until about 2001 when a new CEO arrived from Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy who had run the Veuve Clicquot champagne brand. Now, that was Terry Natoff and Terry Natoff at the time I believe he wasn't even 40 years old had some very shall we say progressive ideas about how a modern luxury watchmaker should be run and also about how modern luxury watches should look and within about a year of arriving, he became the president, the CEO, and the chief stylist. So yeah, he wore a lot of hats. And by 2006, he was ready to release his magnum opus, the DeFi Extreme Dive Watch. And here it is. All 46.5 millimeters of it, 20 millimeters thick, screw-down crown, screw-down chronograph pushers, crown guards, full bracelet, rated to 1,000 meters with a helium release valve and a unidirectional dive bezel. So, let's put it on the wrist, let's talk about this tumultuous era in Zenith history, and let's get a sense of where the DeFi Extreme stands today. Because I feel that in a lot of ways, this watch is sort of a DeLorean for your wrist. Something that launched with a huge bang, flamed out, and then slowly came back as sort of an iconic period piece. Because I've seen the prices of these starting to harden, and an uptick in forum interest in these watches, let's just say the train is beginning to leave the station, but before we do, the basics. 46.5 millimeters, it is 20 millimeters thick, and yet, in titanium, with a beautifully supple clasp, beautifully supple bracelet, the bottom line is, it actually wears decently on my wrist. Now, the look is a matter of personal preference, but the lugs are tastefully short and wonderfully compact. So despite the fact that it's almost a 47 millimeter watch, on my six and a third inch, that's roughly 16 centimeter wrist, the watch fits. Now with links removed to adjust it for my size, I could wear this every day as a casual watch. Because it's a nice, relatively chaste and sober, white and black combination, that is silver and black combination, it's not quite as extrovert, not quite as flamboyant as some of the gaudier DeFi extremes. I feel like this could go well in terms of a color complement to everyday clothing. Because it is so thick, obviously, it's never going to fit under a dress cuff. I mean, I mean, short of wearing like a radiation suit of some kind, you're never going to get enough clearance to top that sapphire. But the bottom line is, it doesn't look out of place on the wrist, and it doesn't feel out of place. Zenith really did its homework here. Now, while Terry Natap's sense of style was hugely controversial for a watchmaker known for its small, anachronistic styles, uh, the bottom line is ergonomically, and in terms of materials investment, Natap and LVMH put a lot of money into Zenith during those years. And that really bears out in the design of this watch, ergonomically, and in terms of the quality, the fit, the finish, the materials, it leaves nothing to be desired. It's definitely a step up from Hublot of the same era, and it doesn't trail that far externally from the fit and finish and material quality of Audemars Piguet. Zenith is still one of the great manufacturers in watchmaking, and regardless of what you might have thought of the look of this watch at the time, those are the same Zenith master watchmakers, finishers, and assemblers working on this watch, who are today building the Georges Favre Chacot Fusée and the Christophe Coulomb Academy models. The same people built this watch, and they built it to their standard, not Terry Natoff's. So there's a lot of pride of craftsmanship and high quality fit, finish, and assembly in this watch. And it is, after all, an El Primero. The famed high beat, that's 5 hertz, 36,000 vibration per hour, Automatic winding, integrated chronograph, historically unveiled in 1969, it was the first of its kind. You still get that here. Although the crystal is over 4 millimeters thick, it's an incredibly thick sapphire with an interior cyclops eye for viewing the date. 
you can still hear that high rate heartbeat inside the case when you hold it up to the ear. So you get that traditional El Primero novelty element that so many have grown to love. Another thing I'd like to call out is just how much depth there is to this dial. Now you can sort of see it at an angle right here, but there are several planes leading down from the hands. After the hands, there are these flared out sub-registers on the side. There is a 60 minute calibrated ring running around the outside. When you drop down one plane below that, now there's a engine turned prolage pattern lower plate face. And then again, another plane below that, there is a carbon fiber disc with the company marquee, the Zenith star, and the sub-register that indicates the hours right there. Now, there's a lot of interesting shapes and textures and tones on this dial. And in person, it reads as a tremendously high quality piece with tremendous detailing, attention to detail, quality. It's not a function of style. Everything that's done on this watch is executed to the standard of the Zenith manufacturer. The style is incidental, the quality is objective, and therein lies the continuity from the old Zenith to the new. It's in there. The bottom line is, if you remember that old Zenith commercial from the 70s, the old Zenith ad, you know, the quality goes in before the name goes on, that holds up. And to quote a more recent Zenith tagline, life is in the movement, again, that's true. The classical El Primero, here it's actually contained within something resembling a bank vault, water resistant to a thousand meters. It does contain a helium release valve should you be so inclined to use a diving bell, but the bottom line is, as a sports watch, this is one of the toughest variants of any DeFi ever made. The DeFi line traditionally is a sports watch in the Zenith catalog. It was introduced during the 1970s on a series of screw-down crown uh, rugged watches, both El Primero and time only. Back then they had thicker crystals, greater water resistance, more robust cases, screw-down crowns. It was revived by Nataf to be his signature sports watch, the watch that was really going to be the crowning achievement of the new Zenith. And so you have a very rugged piece here that's ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other oversized, overbuilt sports watches of the time, including things like the Royal Oak Offshore Diver and Scuba from the mid-decade and the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller. Those are the kind of watches that go head-to-head -head with this. It's better to compare this watch on the terms of the oversized sports watch class than against previous El Primeros or subsequent El Primero dress watches. And as an oversized diver, this one's fun. It's durable. It's got tremendous presence. All the hallmarks of quality from dial detailing to case detailing, fit and finish, wrist comfort, they're all there. Even the unidirectional rotating bezel rotates with a very robust detent feel. Under the, under the hand, it's got enough resistance that you know it's not going to be easily displaced, but it turns like a fluid, high-quality piece with a beautiful ratcheting sound and a beautiful ratcheting feel that transmits through the skin. Again, just a fantastic piece. I could spin this all day because it is a tactile pleasure. Just like the traditional column wheel El Primero, a tactile pleasure to operate and in rude health in this example. This watch has all you need. Water resistance, a date, robust case, water resistant bracelet. You don't have to worry about a leather strap or hide. It's got everything that is iconic about the El Primero and so much that was memorable about that extravagant, flamboyant, almost ecstatic, almost modern roaring 20s spirit of the mid 2000s. In a lot of ways, there's overlap between those eras. This thing is like a 1920s Duesenberg or an 80s Ferrari Testarossa. It's just an outrageous icon of an overblown, overwrought, ecstatic era. And I think it's destined to become a highly desirable period piece, something that people really look back on with sort of a nostalgia for that energy and that exuberance. If you feel the way I do, and you're interested in a 100% complete boxed set, Zenith DeFi Extreme, check it out on our website, Watch You Want. I have a feeling that if you let this DeFi Extreme's charm seep into your skin, it just may become the watch you want too.